everybody, this is Carolina Millan here, and today I have a special guest on the show. This is Peng Jun, all the way from Malaysia, right? You're in Malaysia right now, yes? That's correct. <laughs> How's it going? How are you? It's uh, late here. I'm very excited to be here on this call with you, and um, hopefully I'll be able to serve your audience in giving them what they need as well. Thank you so much. I've, I've been following your journey for the past year. I, I think what you do is, is very impressive. I really admire your work and, and you provide some massive value. So for those people listening or watching who may not be familiar yet with you, probably not that many because I, I've seen you all over the place. So for those few people who, who may not know you, can you share with us your story, how you got started, and what was your the breakthrough, your turning point in your career as an entrepreneur? So I started off in the gaming niche. Um, it started off through really desperation. I wanted to make some money on the side, um, and I went to look online. I typed in how to make money online, and there were a bunch of people selling me all these different products. And I was buying all these different you know ebooks back in the day. Um, the one thing that I got was people saying, oh, you got to sell digital products online. It was a big thing then. This is 11 years ago. So I created this like 32 page Microsoft Word file guide teaching people how to play this computer game called World of Warcraft, which was like my passion back in the day. So back then, uh, things was very different. Uh, the platforms that I used was like pay.com and Clickbank and different things like that. But that's basically the, my first big break was in a gaming niche. Um, and uh, I, I scaled it up into all these other computer games market. And I pretty much monopolized the entire uh, gaming niche eventually um, after a couple of years. Um, but a long story short, I actually nearly lost um, everything overnight. Uh, because as I was building all these different things, uh, what many people don't know in my story is that um, I didn't even have the confidence to actually market under the name Peng Jun. Because a long time ago, my friend told me, they, uh, he said, if you want to sell globally to the people who live in the US, the UK, and Australia, uh, my friend told me, nobody's going to buy from a person named Peng Jun when they can't even <laughs> pronounce it. So I thought, okay. Um, so I created this pen name. Tony Sanders, and I've always shared the story of Tony Sanders, um, which is really, you know, Tony Robbins and Colonel Sanders from them <laughs> too. And um, I marketed all these names under Tony Sanders. And back then, I was in all these different markets, all these gaming markets, and I was also in the dating space and the forex space. But many of these different markets, I marketed under the same pen name, Tony Sanders. So the problem arised when I actually sent an email out from Tony Sanders. Um, for a product on Farmville, which is a huge game then in 2009, um, to my, to my no, it was the other way around. I sent a dating offer to my Farmville list. So <laughs> it was like, like 300,000 people in Farmville, my Farmville list back then um, for a dating offer. So my spam complaints went through the roof. I was using Aweber and they shut my account down, which had like um, about 800,000 subscribers. Um, and the worst thing is they didn't want to give me a copy of my email list. They said that in our terms of service, we actually hold the right to not give you a list um, because it's in our TOS. So really because of that, and everybody knows like the money's in the list, right? I pretty much built everything from there. Um, so I lost pretty much my entire business overnight. The sites were still there, but what good is that if you don't have a list? So I thought to myself, like if I had to start all over again, which is what I did, what do I want to do now? And I thought, well, all these years, I didn't have the confidence to market under Ping Jun. Maybe now I can actually teach people how to monetize their passion and what they know. Um, and that's what I did. So that's when it's only a couple of years back when I started to market to people to show them how to monetize what they know. And that's pretty much my story. In mm -hmm. Nice. How did you go about rebuilding your list? So it's, it's I, I think that one thing people need to understand is that tactics may change, but strategies don't. Mm -hmm. So like, so people always like, like what's the best way to build this? It's, it's the same thing. It's still provide value, give value to people, okay? Now the platforms might be different. So back then it was Google AdWords. Today it's Facebook, but that, those are tactics. 10 years from now, we don't know if Facebook is gonna be the king, but what's not gonna change is that 
we still need to give value first so that people will gladly give us their name and email and that's how we build a list we build a list by giving something away that is of value to people and that is not going to go away for a really long time mm-hmm. yeah that's actually very a very important thing to understand for everybody listening that what you just said that the strategy in the end is always going to be the same and people will always be looking for value in the end what what changes is maybe the delivery the platform but it will always be the same so if you put value first you should be able to build that audience so i think that's a great lesson that you had to go through though (laughs) losing your entire list i think things happen for a reason and now that it's all over and no matter how much i don't want to go through it again um, I'm actually glad that it happened because if not for that incident, I would still be hiding under a shell trying to market in all these different markets under a pen name. Mm. And while it was good, comfortable lifestyle money, I wouldn't have been able to build like an empire from it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And have you ever, because you were afraid of using your name or well, maybe someone else told you not to use your name, but did you ever really experience an issue with people not understanding your name or it was all just a story in, in your head? No, th- I think one thing is it's definitely a self-limiting belief. Um, being here in Asia, um, it's always the case that, oh, why would people who are in a lot more advanced civilizations in the US buy from somebody like Ping Jun, who lives in Malaysia, what does he have to offer? So that was one of my self-limiting beliefs. I thought like, maybe my friend is right. So, um, but after having now, you know, done events and speak in more than 20 countries all over the world, I realized that what it really was is just that it was a belief. It was a self-limiting belief. And I don't have that belief anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. And the only way to get rid of that belief was to actually go and do it. Just face face the, the fear. Yeah. Just have to do it. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> and that's that really is a great story. Now, I, I the first time I met you in person was uh, at Funnel Hacking uh, this year, actually. And I was really impressed by your speech. I got so much value. Um, I mean, for me, next to Tony Robbins, you were probably the best speaker. Like, that's my humble opinion. Um, Because you actually went out there and you shared the entire social media strategy that your team is building with you. So what do you think makes a social media strategy successful today with, with the way the platforms are today? Well, if we really take a look at social media, social media is about attention that's what it is and with so much information out there on all these different platforms we got to ask ourselves like what is the best way to get attention now if we take a look at like the huge celebrities whether it's kanye west or the kardashians whether you love them or you hate them the one thing you cannot deny is their ability to get attention and if you take a look at what causes attention it's really polarity. The first thing we got to understand is what's really important is the messaging that we put out there. So that means no matter what strategy you adopt, whatever Facebook targeting or retargeting strategy that you adopt, it's never going to be powerful if you do not have the first piece figured out, which is the messaging. And messaging means not being neutral with your message. Most people, because We all want to be people pleasers. Most people want people to like them. Most people will end up with a neutral safe message. And a neutral safe message is a message that tries to appeal to a mass market. So the first thing we got to switch when it comes to social media is the ability to not use neutral messages. So that means if let's say if a person's into fitness and if you're trying to run a Facebook ad, if you are trying to create content, a video on Facebook, a neutral, safe, boring message would be like, how to lose weight. Watch this video, right? That's neutral, that's safe. But neutral is boring. However, if you had the same exact content and your title is the real reason why you're fat, that (laughs) is going to offend people. Some people, it's going to be offended by the message, but the people 
I can guarantee that it's going to get higher engagements and the people that love you for your message is really going to love you. And there will be people who will be offended and will hate you for it. But that is going to get you a lot more results on social media. So social media in short, it all begins with your messaging, the message you put out there. Don't go with safe, neutral messages. Use polarity. But at the same time, I'm not talking about going out there and offending people. That's not what I mean. It means that it's about thinking about what is normal, traditional, conservative advice that most people dish out there and come up with a twist. If you take a look at the best-selling, well, one of the best-selling book of all time in the area of money and wealth, it's like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right? Robert Kiyosaki. And Robert Kiyosaki, you take that book, it is everything against traditional education, right? It's everything against it is like, it talks about how um, say, people say, oh, you need to save money. That book says savers are losers. It says that most people think that house is an asset. It says that book says your house is not an asset. So it says things like the rich does not work for money. The reason why that thing works so well is because of the messaging, because of its polarity and it's against normal, safe, neutral messaging. And that's really the biggest piece of social media. So before you start exploring on the tactics or strategy of Facebook pixels or retargeting, it's all about understanding what is the message you put out there first before you figure out the tactics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is that is really, really important as well. Um, because there's so much noise that the way to stand out is to somehow be controversial sometimes. And it's true, you will upset some people, but in the end, it gets the attention. So, yeah. yeah. What is right now uh, your favorite platform when it comes to social media, where, where you're getting most of your clients from? I, I, I believe that social media has two very important pieces. There is the long term and the short term. Long term is creating the brand, which is where people will come to you rather than you going to them, which is a long term play. And then there's the short term, which is direct response, which is basically running the ads so that for every one dollar you spend, you get back two dollars in return. So the way I do all of this, like my favorite right now, that's making us the most money is obviously Facebook. But I know that I mean, I love Instagram. Um, I know that the free stuff that I put on Facebook that is eventually repurposed into whether it's a podcast or whether it's goes onto YouTube, my best clients may not necessarily be from Facebook. Those are people who don't know me, but the, my best clients are usually people who really consume my content. And it, it, and it still could be from Facebook. So I think in short, I'll still say it's Facebook, but we need to focus on both the long term and the short term, not just running the ads but also creating content for free that you will not see the returns on investment on your time or money in the short term, but will play a huge role. I mean, even like calls like these, we won't see ROI or anything like that in the short term, but it's just really just giving value to our followers, creating great content because of that brand. And that's a long-term strategy that many marketers do not look at. Exactly. Yeah, that you, you hit it right there because uh, the way I see social media as well, for me, the ROI, most times it's not something immediate, like with a Facebook ad where you can immediately get a lead or a sale. But when you put out content, you're building something long term, you're bu building a reputation, you're getting your message across. And and that way, sometimes you can run out of money for, for paid traffic, but your content continues to work for you and continues to generate results. So that is also very important. So. Um, so what is, uh, I mean, we, we just talked about, um, I mean, I just mentioned that I met you at the Funnel Hacking Live event, and I know you're a fellow Two Comma Club, and you're in the Two Comma Club X as well, so congratulations for that, for your eight-figure mark. Um, funnel Hacking today, like, it's a, it goes beyond click funnels, I believe. Um, I mean, they adopted the term and everything, but I think you can, you can do that across all platforms. Um, how do you approach that, uh, the art of funnel hacking? Maybe explain a little bit what it is and, and share with us um, how you go about it as well. So one of the things that I'm doing um, is I just announced to my team actually today that we are going to a brand new market, um, which is basically um, in supplements and we want to bring it to all of the major stores here in Asia. But like, so for me, 
if we go to a, whenever we go to a brand new market, the first thing I always ask is, who are the people that's crushing it right now? And what can we learn from their journey? Because these are the people that has paid the price, their education, learn from the mistakes, and rather making the mistakes, learn from them. So the first thing I think that, I mean, it's, it's pretty much what funnel hacking, most funnel hackers would do, is I will look at their sales process in terms of all of their different pages, their upsells, their price points. I'll look at what the offer is. Who is the, who are, what's the red ocean and what's the blue ocean that they've carved for themselves. And I would use that as the starting point to model after, but not copy, but rather think about how can we do things either better or differently from them. So I would use the sales funnel as the, the benchmark of the offer and the flow. I will take a look at their languaging and I'm thinking about how can I differentiate my offer from them so that it's not a me too product. That's the first piece, modeling the funnel. And a second piece would be the traffic. I think one thing that Facebook has enabled us you know, so easily now is like two months ago, they just launched a new feature where you can actually go to somebody's page and click on the tab info and ad. And, and like Facebook will send you however much traffic you can actually handle, um, you know, just by modeling the ad copy and the traffic. So like the, the, the thing that's really powerful right now is, is, and what I mean by that is that if, if you're into personal development and you want to create a personal development product, you can actually go to Tony Robbins page, click on info and ads and see what the number one personal development trainer does to run all of his ads on Facebook. Can you see how powerful that is? That, that is game changer. You can look at their copy. You can look at their images. You can look at the videos. And the best part is if you see an ad, a sponsored post that has got hundreds and thousands of views, what does that tell you? It tells you that the ad is printing money, right? A person will not leave an ad on with a few hundred thousand views or engagement, comments, likes, and shares if it was not making them money. So I think that funnel hacking is just looking at those two things. The flow of the funnel, which is the languaging, the price point, the offer, as well as the other side of the equation, which is the ads. Reverse engineer, and if you piece these two things together, I think what's really important, and Russell, say, Russell Brunson says all the time, is that the path has been figured out by somebody else. You know, model what works rather than trying to figure things out on your own. Yeah, I mean, reinventing the wheel at this point is is really unnecessary for for the majority unless you're creating a new a new market. So, um, so you're you're getting into the supplement niche now. What 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 made you uh, take that decision? So for me, I'm always thinking about scaling. Okay, mm -hmm. so like now that we have reached this milestone in our business, like what's next for us? And I'm taking a look at my business as a whole. And I know that while selling products online is great, while selling digital products, while selling events um, and doing all these workshops um, and doing all these things is great. The only thing is that it's reliant on Ping Jun, right? All of our products is reliant on Ping Jun. And, I, and the next step, like I know that the next thing is to build a business that is actually sellable. Like, so even though we are making, you know, great revenue and profits in our business. My business isn't exactly sellable. Why? Because it needs Ping Jun. So I'm thinking like, what's the next thing for us? And I want to be able to create, and our mission has always been creating products that helps entrepreneurs in certain skill sets. And that's why we, we may have create products, whether it's Facebook, whether it's social media, whether it's teaching people how to sell, whether it's speaking on platforms, whether it's running live events. So all of our products teaches people and entrepreneurs a certain skill set to bring their business to the next level. But then I'm thinking like, what's the next thing? What's other things that entrepreneurs need that doesn't need Ping Jun in the equation? So for me, I know that a huge part of my life is um, drinking green juice. So like one of the things I love doing, especially when I travel, uh, to keep my energy levels up is I try to take a cold pressed green juice on a daily basis. The problem with that is that it's highly perishable and some countries that I go to, it might be hard for my team to buy it for me. So I know that in the US, it's green powder is 
can be found in stores, but here in Asia, it's actually pretty rare. And this is something I truly believe in. So I'm always asking like, as a business, can it be profitable? Is it something that we believe in? Yes, yes. Um, is it scalable? Yes. Is there a proven business model for it? Yes. So, um, and that's why I know like supplements is the next thing for us. Yeah, so uh, that's interesting, actually. Would you share what um, uh, what you look at? I mean, I think you just did, but is there anything else you look at? You look at when you get into a new business model. Is it scalable? Is it profitable? What else do you look at? Uh, how, how do you evaluate what new business venture to start? Okay, so like the different things I was thinking about is, of course, um, profit margins. Is it can I find a blue ocean in the red ocean? I think that's really important because the truth is the most profitable markets in the world are all highly competitive. It's all red oceans. So where, how can I find the blue ocean in the red ocean? So I thought about that. Um, I thought about like, who is my target market? Um, and I know that is that, and another important thing I think about is what I call like the eventuality, which is, Am I going into a market where people will eventually want that more and more? So I know that in this part of the world, in Asia, people are not as health conscious as, you know, as the US. But I know eventually we're getting there. So I'm going to go in a market that has eventuality. So I'm thinking about eventuality. Is, is, is this a shrinking business model, a shrinking industry, or is it only going to become bigger and bigger? I'm thinking about, is it a sellable business? Is it something that I can um, sell to Nestle for $3 billion down the line if I choose to, right? Not that I, I'm not thinking about the exit plan right from the start, but I'm thinking about like whether it's sellable or not because that's, that means that it's scalable, you know? So I'm thinking about, um, yeah, all these different things basically was brought into the equation when I was thinking about a brand new market. Yeah, that's that's actually really important. And and I look at your journey and I look at I look at Tony Robbins as well, where he was also smart enough to start developing businesses that were not reliant on Tony Robbins, because even if he's as successful as he is, his his business needs Tony Robbins to function. Right. Um, but he also has supplement companies and and is an investor in other companies. And I think that is the smart way for us to go where we start with our personal brand, we make stuff happen there, and then we continue to, to branch out. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if you look at Tony Robbins, and, and that's a, a pretty good example, because if you look at Tony Robbins, and he's close, his net worth is like close to a billion dollars right now. And if you take a look at how he spends his time, he spends a lot of time still traveling, running events, workshops, unleash the power within and all these different things. But if you really take a look at his business model, first of all, you can see like his platinum partnership that sells for like $70,000 a year now. He gets all these high net worth clients in that believe in him and his message, that has the money, that want to partner up with him with real businesses where he just needs to put in a fraction of his time. And now he can become a business owner or investor in somebody else's business. So notice like what Tony Robbins does is that he uses his personal branding to fuel all these other businesses that does not need his personal branding. And that's why moving forward, personal branding is so crucial, but we still need to build businesses that does not require us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and I, I also, I see the power of the personal brand in that way, that, that it is something, number one, belongs to you, and number two, you can leverage it exactly like you're doing and like, like people like Tony do. And even Russell Brunson, I think he's also into, sub, into some supplement uh, companies where he has invested. That's right. Yeah, yep. yeah that's right. Um, what would be a piece of advice that you could give to people who are just starting? They're listening to us. They're watching. They want to, they want to start a business. They don't know where to go or they started something, but they are struggling. What would be some advice you could give them? I think most people start a business. The first mistake most people do is they go into a market because they feel that market is profitable. So what most people do because they want to make money on the side, they go and join some sort of program that teaches them, okay, to make money, you want to 
join this thing. You want to start buying solo ads here. You want to start running these Facebook ads and send it to this thing. And then you can start making money. Now, the first problem with that is that it's straight away Red Ocean. You're going to a brand, a, a, to a new market that's totally competitive, Red Ocean, and there's no competitive advantage. And because you are doing something that you actually hate, you're doing it just for the sake of money, you'll realize that you'll not be able to grow and scale the business. However, if the first step you actually took was to go into a market that you actually care about. It's a topic that you genuinely have interest in, that you genuinely want to make a difference and contribute. That changes everything. And the thing is this, for the longest time, it's always been known or taught to people in our upbringing, in our schools, that career and the thing that makes money is one thing but our passion and our hobby and what we love doing is a totally different thing. And that's why most parents would s send their kid and say, okay, there's this passion you want to do great, but go study that marketing or business or accounting and finance degree first. And when you get that, you can do, you can pursue your passion. But here's the thing that the internet has changed for us. If you think about any market, no matter how crazy it is, whether it's teaching people how to do makeup, whether it's playing computer games, whether it's World of Warcraft, whether it is gardening, whether it's teaching people how to play the piano, you got to think and ask yourself, do you believe that there is somebody out there in that market that has made over a million dollars and crushing it in the space? And I can tell you the answer is 100% yes. So if the answer is yes, then why can't that next person be you? Because again, the path has been paved by somebody else and now it's about just modeling what works in terms of their funnels and their traffic. So stop going with these BizOps offers. Stop going with these, you know, go into the make, and that's what many people do. They go straight into the make money online offer because they want to make money online. And they realize they have no competitive advantage because that's not what their strength is. That's what, not where their passion is in the first place. So if you are struggling, if you're just starting, I have no idea what to do. Number one is to pick a market that actually matters to you. Number two is to look at what's working, model the people that's crushing it, no matter how crazy you think that market is, whether it's dog training, whether it's opening boxes of toys, there's somebody that's crushing it right now reverse engineer, model what works, not copy, model what works. And then after that, start building your funnel and your traffic sources based upon it. I mean, that's like the shortest answer possible, <laughs> but you got to fix the first step first is do something that matters to you. I think, th I mean, that's the key takeaway here. Uh, so many people are just following the herd. Like, okay, everybody seems to be doing this or joining that company or this other company. Or, And I, I personally, I am an affiliate marketer myself. But I, I never get involved in anything as an affiliate unless I believe in it or unless I enjoy doing it. And I think that's so important. So many people just do it for the sake of it, just because they want to make some money. They're also very vague about what they want. So when, you're, we, when you have vague uh, goals, you get vague results. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, I'd love to hear about your, your routine because just before we started the call, um, I mean, the, the, the official recording, um, you told me that you, you, you're not the type of person that gets up early and all of that. And I'd love to hear what your typical day looks like because there are a lot of people like me as well, like you. Um, and some people feel bad about not getting, getting up early. So if you could share with yeah, us. Yeah, if there's one thing um, I know is that all these different productivity gurus who say you got to wake up at 5 a.m. if you want to get a competitive edge and finish your workout by six and then you got to hustle and grind 12 hours. Like to me, that has never worked for me. I can tell you running my business, for the most part, I do not sleep with an alarm clock. Um, I do not have to start my day at a certain time. My typical day just looks like this. I wake up after I finish sleeping. I go to the gym. I do my workout. I get focused. Um, I will listen to a podcast usually while I um, train. Um, and then after that, I'll head to office if I'm around, which is pretty rare at the same time um, because I want to hang out with my team and, you know, um, uh, get the team aligned. Um, but that's really it. I'm just in the office usually for maybe like 
two, three hours. And then after that, um, do a couple of meetings. But, but most of the time, like last year, I probably stepped in my office less than 30 times the entire year. So I, it's not about going to the office. It's not about having a certain routine. Um, but I think that what is important is that you must have some things that is non-negotiable. Um, and I truly believe like for, for me, health and fitness was never a thing for me. Like it was always like focus business and results. But once I started adding that element of number one, going to the gym each day, um, my, my diet is not always on point, but the one thing that's non-negotiable is I will take the time off to actually um, exercise and go to the gym. So that's a typical routine for me, um, training and doing my business. And I, I still spend a lot of time playing computer games. Like after this call, I'm going to play this game called Overwatch, like right after this, <laughs> you know? So um, I think it's about... I, I really do not believe in the whole, you know, uh, grind and hustle 15 hours a day. Um, I think it sounds good, but I really think it's more about being productive. Like when I, when I do stuff, there's no distractions. That's going to be way more important than hustling 15 hours a day. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask about that. If you still had that passion for video games and what, what games were you playing at the moment? <laughs> Is there any other yeah. game? It's that that my main game now is um, Overwatch, which is like a, a shooting game. Okay, because everybody's talking about this other game, uh, Fortnite. I don't even, I, I yeah. don't really play, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not my type of game. But <laughs> well, Peng, uh, I want to thank you so much for your time today. That was incredibly, incredibly valuable. I'm not sure how much more time we had, so I, di I didn't want to take much more of your time. Um, no worries. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything you are working on, any project, anything you would like to share with the audience. Um, obviously, where they can find you. I'm going to put your, your website links here in the description, of course. But if there's anything you'd like to share. I also know you wrote a book recently. I think I bought it, but I don't think I got it yet. Um, oh, really? So, okay. yeah. Uh, platform Closing, is it? Platform is it? Closing. Wait, yeah. Wait. So we're I here. Need to check. Yeah, this one. It. Can people um, still get it? Yeah. Um, well, there's, there's two main books that I have. Um, if speaking is something that you've always wanted to do, whether it's online or offline, whether it's through a webinar or whether it's through you know, live, live audience, um, get my book, Free Plus Shipping, The Standard Funnel, mm -hmm. uh, platformclosing.com um, on how to speak um, in front of audiences, online, offline, pitch something at the end. Um, or if you've always wanted to, where's my other book? Um, if you always wanted to learn how to do social media the right way, um, you can get a free copy of my other book, Lit, somewhere. Um, Let's find it. <laughs> Content Multiplier Formula um, and get a copy. Just cover shipping. Content Multiplier Formula. formula. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. All right. I'll place the links. Anything else you're, you're working on at the moment? Well, the, my new focus is on a supplement thing. Um, mm -hmm which you know i'm very excited about um but yeah those those are that that's my new focus right now mm -hmm. so it, it's not it, it hasn't gone public yet it doesn't have a name yet your company no in fact i think you're kind of like the first person i'm telling you to other than my team because we had that meeting this this morning oh wow cool got the exclusive <laughs> <That's> right <laughs> all right i'll be on the lookout for it i'll be asking you or your team because i'd love to hear more about it i'm, I'm also into sure. supplements and green, sure. green juices. Green awesome. juices is amazing. It's, it's been a life changer for me. And that's why I believe in it so much. Mm -hmm. You got it. Well, thank you so much again. I hope to see you in person once again. I don't know if you're going to, to Funnel Hacking next year. I probably will. Yeah. All right. Hopefully, I'll see you there. I think I'll be there as well. Thank you so much, Carolina. Appreciate thank your you. time. Thank you thank so you. much as well. I'll talk to you soon. And to everybody, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview. And I'll put all the links to find Peng Jun online so you can follow him and, and learn from him. He's amazing. Thank all you right. so much. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hey, Carolyn. Bye-bye.